11,500 pounds in weight, 10 and a half feet tall, riding on 66 inch tires. This is the monster truck they call Bigfoot. This year, over 4,000 people gather to watch longtime Bigfoot truck driver Dan Runty launch the nearly six ton truck through the air to try and shatter the existing monster truck long jump record of 208 feet. So how do you take an awesomely powerful and incredibly massive monster truck and make it fly over 200 feet? And will it be enough to shatter a world record distance? We're going to show you on this episode of Popular Mechanics, how they do that. Indiana State Fairgrounds, Indianapolis, destination for monster truck lovers from across the Midwest. Today, they are here to see one thing, Bigfoot 18 attempt to smash the monster truck long jump record which stands at an astonishing 208 feet. I actually started driving Bigfoot back about 22 years ago. I have uh, 10 racing championships, seven time MTRA driver of the year, and we had the long jump record back until a year ago. We jumped the Boeing 727 and, and it was a rough ride. I believe just about a year ago, there was a truck on the East Coast that, that went a little further than we did. Guinness took it and we're coming back to get it. Can Bigfoot 18 and Dan break the world long jump record of 208 feet? It's time to go. Dan and Bigfoot land safely, but did they break the record? We'll find out. First, we'll analyze Bigfoot's jump, but there's a problem. When Dan was warming up Bigfoot before the record attempt, he plowed through the speed camera set up to record his jump speed. There is no way of knowing how fast he was traveling, how high he flew, or how hard he hit. We gave our footage to Associate Professor David Hogg of New York University's Physics Department, who was able to provide a clear picture of the jump. 10 feet before the 570-foot track, Dan feathers the throttle to get Bigfoot rolling. He hits the beginning of the track and plants his foot. He slams into second gear. With the speed rapidly rising, Dan concentrates on keeping Bigfoot square with the jump. Dan can no longer see the jump and steers using the lines on the ramp as his guide. At nine seconds and around 85 miles per hour, Bigfoot hits the ramp and launches into the air. The truck rises to about 22 feet off the ground. Mid-air, Dan feathers the throttle to keep the wheels turning. The wheel speed must match the air speed when he lands. If not, he risks serious damage to the truck and himself. After two seconds airborne, Bigfoot 18 smashes into the ground at 70 miles per hour at an angle between 20 and 30 degrees. The impact on the truck is about four Gs. With the jump over, he touches the brake lightly to slow the vehicle. Let's see it again in real time. That's about six tons of machinery hurtling through the air over 200 feet and landing safely. It seems impossible. Let's take a look at the engineering and construction that is needed to build a truck capable of taking on a world record. Build time on, on a normal Bigfoot truck with most of the time at least two guys in the shop working on it would be roughly about six months. In less than a year's time, Bigfoot will have brought out three brand new trucks. This year, the Bigfoot team wiped the slate clean to redesign their monster truck so it would smash the world record. Bigfoot 18 boasts a new longer chassis and a vastly improved suspension package. This truck actually weighs 1,500 pounds more than Bigfoot 16, the previous truck. This has actually two working shocks on every corner. The bump stops used to be solid. We're actually running a gas bump stop. We're doing bigger obstacles. The truck's taking more abuse. You gotta make it tougher. The engine of choice for most monster trucks in the United States is a V8. Most people run a Chevy, we actually run a Ford. Bigfoot 18 has a C-headed 460 base block. The 460 block is a, is a Ford SVO block that we use and we bore it and stroke it. A BDS blower, we're sponsored by BDS. It's a 871, standard rotor length, standard helix angle, so we can't run a high helix or anything. We're also limited to a 10% overdrive. Uh, we run Enderley Injection Hat and the Nitro Barrel Valve is what we're running on our stuff. We're also sponsored by Headman Headers. We run all of their product on all of our vehicles that we have. 
which are all custom made headers. Most monster trucks run on methanol, which the slang for that is alcohol. Bigfoot 18 is running on alcohol. It makes the motor run a little bit cooler. Right now it has a 22 gallon fuel cell on it, and in a typical run on an outdoor track, we would burn about five gallons of pass. We pump about twice as much alcohol in as most people do gas. For the long jump, what we're going to do is address the main jet and also the fuel system in the truck because it's going to be a, a sustained long run. We're going to address the fuel curve in it so that it has enough fuel that it doesn't build too much engine temperature and at the same time we get the optimum performance out of the motor. The placement of this particular truck where the motor's at, we lowered it down a little bit and moved it a little closer to the roll cage. That's important because you want a well-balanced truck. The reason you don't want a whole lot of tail weight is because the truck tends to want to fly like this all the time. The motor's in the chassis backwards, which then runs through an Abruzzi two-speed with a manual valve body, which then goes into a Profab four-gear drop box. Comes from there, goes through the drive shafts into the ZF axle housings that we run, and then out to the planetary gear reduction on the spindles. The drive shafts that we run are custom built drive shafts in house. We actually do them here. It's three and a half inch DOM tubing, 093 wall. What we run in our Abruzzi two speed is a manual valve body. We run a two speed in this one. So if I'm in low gear, the transmission will not shift into high gear until I physically do it. Which also means that if you're in high gear and you make a mistake and pull it back in low gear, it's going to grenade the transmission. The transmission is used in all types of race cars, from drag cars to tough trucks to any kind of race vehicle. What we have here is a Profab transfer case. This is where the power goes after it comes out of the transmission. And this is what turns front drive shaft and rear drive shaft. Bigfoot 18 runs the big one, which is a two inch shaft. The larger the diameter of the shaft is, the more power you can put through it. It uses a series of, of intermeshing gears, which are four idler gears and two quick change gears. For the long jump, what we're going to do is we're going to go with a tall gear, which I can't really tell you what that gear is going to be, but it's not going to be in this configuration. Basically what you do is you grab your quick change gears, you'll put your gear set in, drop the cover on, tighten it up, and you're race ready. The whole thing on the track takes probably five minutes. One of the neatest things about driving a monster truck is it never does the same thing twice. It's good for the spectator, but it's good for the driver too. Fun to drive, it's, it's, a, it's a big massive piece of equipment, it weighs five tons, and it's got engines that are 1500 horsepower. Any guy knows that if adrenaline's involved, we're gonna do it, well it's an adrenaline rush every time you get in one. This particular truck is a concussion chassis, which we bought out of house. It came to us as a, just a bare frame, and then we added everything else to it. With, with this particular design and chassis, what everybody's calling a tube frame chassis, is all the round tube. What you see in here, um, as far as the upper frame rail and the lower frame rail, and then every other piece for the most part is all gonna be round tube. The benefit to that is that you can change wall thickness, you can change diameter, you can change location. If you triangulate the chassis right when you design it, it will share the load. So if you were to take a hit up here, it would push it up this tube and down this tube and then dissipate it through the rest of the tubes. It's important to have some bigger tubing pieces in the bottom and it's also important for it to be rigid, but not so rigid that it won't move in, in a hard crash because it is designed to translate load and also to bend. What we've tried to do is utilize the chassis to make the roll cage part of the whole unit. We had them beef up the roll cage and put some tubes in it in some places that we wanted to uh, protect the driver better. We want to make the shock tower in the rear part of the frame as strong as possible because that is the part that takes the load most of the time. We've utilized a, a, a longer wheelbase. It's longer now so it's harder for it to lift up. If the front end picks up, it's really hard for you to see. Plus, you're not driving with the front anymore you're only driving on the rear. Now you've taken a full-time four-wheel drive vehicle and turned it into a two-wheel drive vehicle. For the jump, we're gonna utilize our bump stops and our shock package, but really in theory, we hope that we never touch the back of the frame. You want the truck to fly level in the air and then come in just a little nose heavy so that your suspension package works. Your visibility out of a monster truck is limited through the windshield. It, it makes it hard to see because of the way the truck picks up and sets down. 
The firewall and the floor are Lexan. Actually, Lexan was developed for aircraft because of how tough it is, and it has a pure optical vision than, than plexiglass, but a lot tougher. Plexiglass will shatter and break where Lexan will bend and keep its form. It's, it's a lot more expensive because of the material it's made out of. When we switched to a tube chassis truck, you have to fill the holes with something. So when we went from a steel body to a tube chassis, that's when we switched. In 1974, mechanic Bob Chandler bolted 48-inch tires on a Ford F-250 and called the truck Bigfoot. The oversized wheels and tires on his pickup caught people's attention and pushed Bob to try new stunts. In 1981, Bigfoot crushed its first cars. A promoter saw the footage and soon had Bob and Bigfoot appearing around the country. A new era of motorsports entertainment was born. Bigfoot trucks were built to be bigger, drive faster, and jump further every year, but faced with a long jump record of 208 feet to beat, has the Bigfoot team finally met their ultimate challenge? There's two shocks on every corner. So we have four 30-inch travel shocks on the rear, and we have four 26-inch travel shocks on the front. On Bigfoot 18, we run what's called a gas over hydraulic shock. What that means is we charge the nitrogen chamber with nitrogen and there's a piston inside of here. So this would be the nitrogen chamber. From this point on the other side of the piston is all fluid throughout the rest of the shock. How it works is by shaft displacement, how much shaft goes in takes the fluid and moves the fluid. So then that in turn moves the piston and compresses the nitrogen. It gets tighter and tighter and tighter. It's just like a mini air compressor almost. There is no external spring on the shock. This nitrogen chamber and the way that we put all of our pieces in it do not need a spring. We have bypass valves on the outside and there's little adjustment screws. From there, you can control how much fluid bypasses that and goes back to the other side of the piston. The driver doesn't have to take this apart at every event. He can come out here and say, I want the shaft to come out faster when I jump, or I want it to go in slower when it lands. So he has two compression adjustments and he has two rebound adjustments for every shock. You don't want this shock to just completely drop out as fast as it can because in theory, it could upset the chassis in the air. This strap back here is called a limiting strap. That strap tethers the axle housing to the frame so that it doesn't break this piston off the inside of the shock because if you just let it hit the bottom it would rip it right off. Through the years as far as Bigfoot goes from the old trucks it was it was basically a truck shock. Without the progression of the shocks themselves I wouldn't have made it 22 years just because of the physical abuse that a driver takes. This axle is designed by ZF for heavy equipment. They haul lots of weight. This is an axle out of a ZF axle housing, which is what we run in Bigfoot 18 as well as our other trucks. These are different in length than a normal truck's axle, and it has this double U-joint so that it's able to steer inside of the knuckle. On Bigfoot number 18, we have custom-built Bigfoot knuckles. The knuckle is the part that turns. Inside of this knuckle, is a three disc wet brake, as well as a planetary gear reduction, a sun gear. The wet brake in this configuration is unlike a disc brake because it does not have a metal piece that spins and you're clamping on it. It has a piston in the back that compresses multiple discs. And the steel plates, you put those together, it causes friction which then tries to slow down what you're doing. The advantage of having a wet brake is that it stays cool most of the time because it is in an oil bath. How a planetary system works, power is put into the third member, which is driven by the transfer case. It goes through the ring and pinion and then out the differential. Then it travels down the axle all the way out into what is referred to as a sun gear. 
On that sun gear, there are gears that go around it that are called planetary gears. Those gears are driven by this one sun gear that sits right in the middle and spins. The housing on the axle is roughly about three quarters of an inch thick all the way around. We have never, in the 15 years that I've been here, broken axle housing. One thing clearly defines a monster truck. Giant tires. Bigfoot 18 rides on custom grooved 66 inch tall Firestone turf tires. Our tires vary anywhere from 650 to 725 pounds, depends on how much hand cutting we do after they buff them. We take a brand new tire and we, we actually have it buffed. It's a fertilizer spreader tire for a three wheel fertilizer sprayer truck. And then we actually cut a tread pattern back in. Originally in the early 70s when Bob built Bigfoot, it was a steel body truck. They figured out that it would roll over. The problem with that is, is it crushed all the panels and folded all the sheet metal in and it took hours and hours and hours to repair all of that. Since then, we found a better way to do it, which is fiberglass. A mesh outside and a heavy backing with a gel coat over it is how it shows up to us. Fiberglass panels are roughly about an eighth of an inch thick, so they're extremely flimsy because there is no framework behind it, it's just a shell. It's just the outer part of the body to make it look like a truck. Because the whole idea is to keep it as light as possible. These bodies typically, for this body style, ranges anywhere from about 125 to 150 pounds, total weight. All monster trucks, because of the safety aspect of them and the spectators, are equipped with an RII. Basically shuts the ignition down on the vehicle. It is controlled off of like a walkie-talkie, a transmitting radio that actually shuts this box down so the promoter or the safety person at each shows, they can shut us down with that radio at any time during the show. Four-wheel steering is when the front tires can turn and the rear tires can turn in the same direction or the opposite direction. The reason for four-wheel steering in a monster truck is because of the size of it. I mean, if you can turn the front and turn the back in the same direction, we all know it's going to turn faster. The steering wheel actually just controls the front tires. We actually shift. It's a two-speed power glide. We actually shift it and do the rear steering with your right hand as you're driving with your left hand all mounted on a two-way rocker switch. Left is left, right is right. So you're in control of everything and your hands never have to leave the controls. As far as driving a monster truck, much like a car, as far as the front steering goes. Really, as far as the pedals in a monster truck, it's the same as a car, I mean, brake and gas. And we pretty much drive them two-footed. You're not changing feet like you do in a car. Better reaction time. As far as the seats, they're all custom built. This seat, you know, is built for me. It goes from head height to shoulder height to your rib cages all the way to the tub that you're sitting in. I mean, you're tight. It is actually bolted and welded to the chassis. I mean, you are part of the vehicle when you're tied in. These seats, from what we used to run, are the answer to a lot of aches and pains. <laughs> We do run a five-point harness like most race cars. I mean, crotch strap, latch straps, and of course, shoulder harnesses that come down. Everything ties together down at your waist. The safety aspect and the comfort level from 20 years ago is, is night and day. The designers, builders, and mechanics have done all they can. It's now time to put their work to the ultimate test. Is Bigfoot 18 ready to take back the monster truck long jump record? Behind the scenes, 10 members of the Bigfoot team have spent a week intensively preparing the monster truck for the record-breaking attempt. I think the worst possible thing that could go wrong is a motor blow up. Then he's got no way to control what's going. He's just along for the ride at that point. Based on the previous record jump and recent test runs, Team Bigfoot measures out a 570-foot track. The track and ramp are now marked and final adjustments are made. We marked the ramp like that 
so that he can pick it up out of everything else that's out here because he's starting from so far back. We're not jumping anything here. We're looking for distance, and we're going to hit it a little faster. Realistically, about 80 mile an hour. If we get 75, we're golden. Time now to see if all the hard work paid off. Will Dan and Bigfoot smash the long jump record? He beat it, man. I, I don't think there could be a better feeling. As far as the landing when the truck did land, it, it was rough. The rear tires actually passed up the front ones when they landed. So Guinness Book says they measure to the rear tire. So if it's up to Guinness, we jump 219 feet. We've just seen what it takes to design and construct a monster truck so powerful that with the right driver, the right crew, and the right stuff, it can jump a record-setting distance of 219 feet. It's, it's a major adrenaline rush. Our fans are ecstatic again. We got the record back legitimately. It's, it's, it's rotten stone. It's, it's an awesome deal. And that's how it's done.